Good morning, I'm Warwick Isaacs. I look after the demolitions on behalf of the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority. And we thought we'd just, um, we've got bus tours starting tomorrow and we're going on the bus route now. And this is just an opportunity for us to show those folk who can't come on the tour or aren't in Christchurch right now, uh, what, what the people on the bus tour will be experiencing. So we're looking at, at demolition sites, at, at some buildings that will be coming down that aren't yet down and, and we'll also be uh, doing a little bit of coverage of the Cashel Mall restart, which is a fantastic uh, restart of, of retail uh, in the centre of the city. So now we're moving on to Ma Street and uh, we've got a couple of buildings here on, our, on my left and those two buildings, that they're leaning, one's leaning backwards, one's leaning forwards and, and perhaps up to four to five hundred mil uh, apart at the top and the plan for these two buildings at the moment is to uh, level both buildings uh, so there won't be demolition jobs at this stage so it's hopeful that they can just simply be leveled and, and made good again so so here we have Forsyth Bar uh, which which has some damage in it that, that the plan at this stage is that that building um, be repaired to its left is, is PwC building. Um, as people know now, the decision has been made for that building to be demolished. And so now we're, we're coming on to Colombo Street, uh, a site where uh, Westpac Bank, Winnebago's, and other, other businesses were. That, that job's almost completed now. Moving on down to Copthorne Central. Uh, that, that is with the owner and the insurer to, to work out the future of that building. And moving on up, in a moment we'll get to, to almost completed demolition uh, of the building adjacent to the Copthorne Central. And then moving on to the Oxford on Avon which is uh, currently being demolished. Off, off to our left, the town hall. That, that's still with the council to, to make the decision on the future of that building. Uh, it's got significant damage, but they're very hopeful that, that that building can be saved. Adjacent to that, and just coming into view in a moment, is the Crown Plaza. And uh, that building is uh, to be demolished, unfortunately. Very large building. Very, uh, has been a very important part of the, the end of Victoria Street and uh, that, that job is out for tender at the moment, just closed this week. Over here, demolition of, of Oxford on Avon going on, and uh, this is the Plunkett rooms adjacent to that. Um, unfortunately, that building is, is coming down also. So we're just going around the terrace now. And over to the left there is, is the PGC site. And again, this is this is a Price Waterhouse Coopers building, which is um, which is yet to uh, be started as a demolition. Now we have a historic band rotunda behind me. Um, there's quite a bit of column damage and, and damage to that building. Uh, as again, that's the City Council building, I understand, and, and they're working on uh, ways of retaining that if at all possible. So we see around this part of, part of the city, there's still a lot of broken glass in buildings. Uh, essentially these buildings uh, have remained untouched by and large since the earthquake and 
that, that's simply because we started with the Cashel Mall and get that reopened for show week, which uh, opened last weekend. And then we've gone from Cashel Mall down down to the south and, and moving east and then going to come back up back up Colombo essentially and Manchester Street. So we're just coming to Manchester Street now. Um, behind me down the corner where we're not going, there are a number of buildings that have come down there. Um, and, and there's quite a lot of liquefaction damage in, in that part of the CBD. So moving along Manchester Street now, we can see quite a bit of damage to the footpaths, which is, is still um, <coughs> still unrepaired and, and as immediately after the earthquakes. <coughs> so we're moving to an area now that, that's been cleared. This, this was um, a highly dangerous area when the buildings were here. So over here on this site, <coughs> Map World was a particularly notable um, shop in this this part of the block, Tulsi Bar adjacent to that, and then over here, uh, iconic Winnebago's, the old um, city council chambers. Behind me, we have the AMI building, which is under demolition at the moment. Uh, so you can literally see through the building, it's been cleared out of all the soft material and uh, is underway with machinery now on the demolition side. The white building here, that, that's still with the owner as to what its future might be. <coughs> so as you can see, this is a particularly damaged part of the city here. <coughs> and on our right, that these buildings have been cleared. Pleasingly, the um, Heritage Apartments, they have some damage, but, but there's no thought of demolition of, those build of that building. Um, just some internal repair. Behind me here, this was SBS building. And uh, there's also the historic Octagon restaurant here, uh, which is to be saved. The owner's um, working very, very hard on, on retaining the, the church itself. Unfortunately, the church hall at the southern side has had to be removed because of the damage to it, but he's working very hard to save the rest. <coughs> the building on our, over here, the, the brick building, that's, um, that's changed hands since the earthquakes and the new owner is, is working to save that building and, and uh, strengthen it to, to current code. So, so what we're looking at here now is the old National Bank building. <coughs> and that's uh, currently under demolition at the moment. So that's looking back up Hereford Street. So moving down Hereford Street to the east now, there's some site set up work here now for this, this building here to come down. The buildings beside up have, have already gone and the building behind me here with the circular holes in the concrete uh, is currently uh, working its way towards demolition. So over here is um, this is former Canterbury Development Corporation building and the, the machine there is, is one of the largest machines in the world uh, and it's, it's something in excess of a, a 60 metre boom on that machine when it's fully extended. The building behind that uh, you can see straight through it that, that's uh, been fully stripped out now, ready for the machinery to get in and pull the building down. So over behind me is a, a building that was pulled down very, very early after the, the earthquake. It was particularly badly damaged. And um, in beside us here now is the, the old Occidental Hotel. It's got significant damage, as you, you can see, with the walls having fallen off it. Um, and its future at this stage is uncertain, I understand. 
So behind me now is, is Latimer Square where in the civil defence days there were in excess of 700 people uh, and a lot of international teams which were working very hard on, on recovering um, people from, from the buildings that had collapsed. Behind me there's also the, the Latimer Hotel which is um, now clear sight as you can see and uh, I know the owner has really great plans for, for a new hotel on that site and, and is looking forward to getting on with that job. Right beside us now we have the basement uh, of what was the Arrow building and that's um, adjacent to the CTV site which, uh, which is left as it is for the moment. So um, <coughs> next, next to that uh, is another vacant site and then, uh, then a, another building which has stuck very, very well to the earthquake. And we also have um, what's known as the IRD building, which has suffered some damage but, but is largely um, being worked on so it can be reoccupied shortly. We can see here still the tributes um, for those who perished in the, in the CTV building. So looking up towards Cashel now, we can see the Hotel Grand Chancellor uh, with work well underway on that, that building and they're currently working on, on taking the roof off as well as um, continue to prop the remaining floors that need to be propped. So now we're just moving south along Madras and we're going to get a view down Bedford Row in a moment. Unfortunately, this um, Spates bar here is, is uh, on its way for demolition at the moment. And looking down, down Bedford Road, there's very few of the buildings left, unfortunately. There were a lot of un unreinforced masonry buildings in that, that street. There is, there is two that, that owners are currently working on, on saving, if at all possible. So now we're going to um, just come to the literal Madras Street intersection down here. You can see the demolition work underway. There now. And there's a significant number of buildings had to come down on Litchfield Street. But there's still another two buildings in there at the moment which, um, which the owner is trying to, to, put, to put together a plan and some funding to, to save. So the, build, the buildings behind me now, the, the owners have been getting in there, I understand that they're doing repair work and they're very keen to, um, to get on and, and get going again once, once they're able to. So over here we have what was Edward Gibbons um, supply uh, shop which was very badly damaged and then we're just moving up now to go down Churum Street. So now we're looking west down Churum Street. Again Edward Gibbons was on our right hand side here and then there was I think Global Fabrics was another shop here, a bathhouse and uh, a few other buildings. We can see still quite substantial damage in, in this area uh, and these, these buildings have still yet to be uh, worked on. Some, some are full demolitions through here and some are partial demolitions. On the left here we have Mackenzie and Willis. Um, so the owner has been successful in, in working with uh, the Christchurch City Heritage People and, and Historic Places Trust and getting a plan together to save the facade. The building behind it is totally destroyed, but the plan is at the moment to save the facade if at all possible. 
Um, so workers to commence on that shortly. Quite a poignant sort of view here with, with mannequins blowing in the wind. And uh, just a reminder of, of what has happened in, in the CBD. So again, we're looking up there towards Westpac, Holiday Inn and Grand Chancellor. And of those three buildings, the Grand Chancellor is obviously well underway and Westpac uh, work will start there either before Christmas or just after Christmas. So what we're looking at here is the Mackenzie and Willis building, uh, which I mentioned facade is to be saved. And you can see now why, why the building behind us is not, not able to be saved. But it's fantastic that there'll be uh, a beautiful facade there left for, for future. This is uh, Alice Video Land, and uh, that building, as you can see, the lights are on, they're working on, on that building now, and uh, that, that's not a demolition, it's, it's entirely uh, safe to, to remain, and that's another good building close to um, the Mackenzie and Willis facade there. So behind Royal Groovy is the Odeon Theatre and as you can see the fly tower is totally separated from the actual theatre itself. And so that, that's still too unsafe to get into for our engineers until the Royal Groovy building is partially demolished and these other buildings are gone so it's safe enough to get our engineers in there to make a decision uh, about that building. So again as, as we're looking North up Manchester, we can see that the Excelsior Hotel facade, which has been retained. This building has also changed hands since the earthquakes, and uh, the new owners is putting a lot of time and effort and, and money into saving the facade. Unfortunately, the hotel behind was not, not able to be saved, but the facade is, and that will that will form part of a, a beautiful new building uh, moving forward as the rebuild gets underway. So this was, this was the real heart of the Highfield, Litchfield Street intersection here. And off to the right there you can see a substantial number of buildings have had to come down given the damage of the earthquake. The majestic church in front of us there, that has got significant damage but, but the owners are very hopeful and very keen on, on retaining the building moving forward. So right in front of us now there was a beautiful old heritage building uh, called the Strangers Building, it had Java coffee in it uh, and that was particularly badly damaged but the building adjacent to it where the scaffolding is, uh, owned by the same owners and that had substantial strengthening work done uh, and is, is really good proof that, that really good strengthening of, of heritage buildings um, does work in some situations. So we're now moving west up Litchfield Street. The buildings behind me um, are being retained. They will all have damage. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what sort of damage they have got, but, but it's good to see that buildings like that, some of them are still staying. The building behind me, it it's, um, was a nightclub and it came right out to the street. It was two stories high. The owner had, had done quite a bit of strengthening work in the, in the what is under that tarpaulin and uh, he's working very hard to get that going again so it's open as quickly as possible as part of the entertainment um, part of the central city. The old council chambers behind us, that's, that's a modern heritage building. Uh, it's, it's not looking in great nick at the moment but that, um, that building I understand is, is to be retained. So moving through here now, we've got the, the old bus exchange. Its features not yet been determined, but you can see substantial uh, damage to the facade where it, it's popped in the earthquakes and, and, and the facade's um, quite badly damaged. 
So behind me, now, Dowson's footwear was, was up here. And what we've got now is, is the contractor's crushing the material on site, so it doesn't have to go to landfill. Uh, and that can be reused uh, as part of filling what were basements and, and large holes where basements have been removed from the buildings. So look, looking right ahead of us now, where the buses are going in, that, that's the new temporary bus exchange. Uh, and this, this is really part of the real positive um, work that's been going on the CBD. That, that site where the buses are going, there's car parks parked in there, but cars parked in there behind me. This is part of the casual mall program to get that going again. Uh, and that's been part of the, the planning between the city council and, uh, and ourselves and getting that area reopened. So moving up here now, this, this area through here, National Bank, uh, the Nam Yi Mid-City mid Centre, that's all outside of the red zone now. Ballantines is open and that, that was part of the Castle Mall restart programme. We're also looking over to the right here, the owners of these sites are very keen to, to get on and rebuild and be part of, of what will be the new vibrant retail um, part of the city centre. And we're working with the building owners on this side of the Castle Wall to see when we can get those buildings outside of the red zone and uh, get those operational again for, for people to keep moving closer and closer into the CBD. So we're looking west along Cashel Mall now, which, which opened uh, last Saturday. So that was the 29th of October. This, this street was particularly badly hit by, by the earthquakes and, and the bulk of the buildings unfortunately had to go. However, what's, what's happened here is that in the civil defence days and the early Sarah days, the, the, the building owners and, and retailers from this part of the city came and, and said, look, we've got a vision for getting the city going again, getting retail back in there and, 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 and re a, a first sign of, of hope of, of the new city rebuild. So we're now looking east along Cashel. You can see the work going on there with the Grand Chancellor, Hotel Grand Chancellor. Also the Westpac building, as I mentioned before, that, that's, the tenders have closed on that and we're the crane adjacent to the Westpac building. Uh, that's the Glassons building there. Unfortunately, that's another building that uh, is underway for demolition at the moment. So we're very keen on getting this, this eastern part of the mall open as quickly as we can, and, and we're working hard to achieve that. So we're looking north up Colombo Street now. We can see the BNZ building there on our right. Uh, that's a building which unfortunately is to be demolished, and it's part of the the Cathedral Square, there was significant damage in Cathedral Square and a lot of buildings in this precinct uh, either have or are to, be, are to come down. So now, now just moving towards Hereford Street now, again moving north as we um, begin to enter the Cathedral Square. Behind me here, though looking up here are for buildings here that are gone. Over here we have the, what was the TSB building. I think that was the new Wendy's, unfortunately for them. The white building, DIA building there, uh, that is to be demolished. But over here the Ibis Hotel has had some damage. They're working very hard to, to get that open as quickly as they can. The central telephone exchange there, that's another building very strong, had some damage, but that's been fully operational since the earthquakes. So now we're moving into the Cathedral Square. Cathedral in front of us. Off to our right, we can still see the BNZ building here. Next to that is the Millennium Hotel. That, that has some damage, but they're working very hard on that building and also the Heritage Hotel behind it to get that reopened as quickly as possible. So looking to my left, the old chief post office over here, 
has some damage, but at this stage there's absolutely no intention of that to be demolished. It's a beautiful heritage building that, that we need to have remain in the square. Behind that is the dome that was from the uh, Regent Theatre, where, that was where, the, where the aquarium was, for those that remember that. Behind that again, Clarendon Towers with the, with the plywood on the, on the windows. So that tender is closed now and, and we're working with the owners on on getting that, that building, um, getting those tenders considered and getting that job underway. Ridges Hotel through there, the, the creamy building that's got some damage, they've been working on there for a long time and they're continuing to work hard on that and getting it reopened. Grant Thornton building is, is with the owners and the insurers and their engineers about its future, as is the old government life building here which has got some windows broken in there, but it certainly has some damage. So here's, here's the cathedral, as you can see it is very badly damaged. And this is a building that, that um, Bishop Victoria Matthews last week announced was to be made safe in the interim in order to get the substantial heritage items that are inside the church out. And also you can see that they're, they're working hard on getting what was the, the bell tower that's been sorted through the heritage element so that had been put in crates and taken away. So the future of this is, is, is yet uncertain other than a make safe which will involve some demolition, some deconstruction and some propping and strengthening I would imagine to, in order to get people safely into the building while, while the church work with the City Council and Historic Places Trust and Sarah on, on what, what the ultimate uh, outcome for the building will be. So looking behind the cathedral was where the press building was. Uh, that, that's gone now. But pleasingly the, the Novotel is, is, uh, has some damage, but it is being uh, saved. They're working hard on it now, been there for quite some time, repairing and replacing what needs to be replaced. So behind us here we can, we can see the work going on, on, on this building behind us, that had a number of gift shops, Louis Vuitton, um, Bond, engineers upstairs, so that's underway as you can plainly see at the moment. So we can see the historic Warners Hotel, unfortunately has um, suffered terrible damage in the earthquake. So we're now just moving out of Cathedral Square, looking north up Colombo, heading into the Gloucester Street intersection. So we talked about um, Forsyth Bar earlier, MFL here on the corner of, of Gloucester and Colombo, uh, that unfortunately has to be demolished. And as, as I said earlier, we're, we're, part of the plan is to move it in an anti-clockwise direction around the city, having open casual mall and essentially pivoting around the Grand Chancellor. So looking east, up, Isaac Theatre Royal is in there and, and their plan is to have that building reopen again early in 2013. Which is fantastic for the, the cultural and theatre side of society. It's a well used theatre and it's marvellous. So now we're just moving west along Gloucester. We can see the farmer's car park building there. As yet, as far as I'm aware, no decisions made on, on the future of that building. Adjacent to the farmers' car park is, is the city library, which isn't being demolished. That's great news for that building. As you can see, some setup is going on here for buildings. And in behind, you would have seen through the Cathedral Square, um, 
shots that, that a large part of Chancery Lane has gone. Also, so we're now moving to almost to the end of what the bus tours that start tomorrow. The building on the left, uh, the Brannigan's building, that's, um, that's the owners and his insurers have decided that building is to come down. And so, again, um, work will commence on that in due course. So look, looking forward through now what is the red zone access point. There's a Lee's, Lee's Crane there, that's, that's the gallery apartment. That building is um, under deconstruction at the moment. The provincial chambers here on our right, they've established a, a construction site there to deconstruct what the, the buildings as they are and, and um, working very, very hard to save those historic buildings. So along, along with the demolition, for many, many months there's been people in here working on, on fixing the buildings that were damaged. Those buildings are still some months away from, from being able to open for the public. But having moving now from, from perhaps the largest demolition site of a CBD in the world into what will be uh, the largest reconstruction site of a CBD in the world, that's fantastic. It's great to be looking forward to what will be a very vibrant, um, sustainable city moving forward.